Oh, get ready for a very scary ghost story, a true ghost story that happened to me. When my daughter was younger, we would sometimes go to the cemetery. The cemetery is called Greenwood. It's in Brooklyn, and its main entrance is on 24th Street, where a giant Gothic triple-spired gate presides. A colony of green monk parakeets, supposedly descendants of a long-ago pet store jailbreak, nest and chatter in those spires among their cold, stony hollows. The parakeets liven the cemetery up because parakeets are famous for their irony. But there is a side gate nearer to where we live that my daughter and I stumbled across one spring. It was just there at the end of Prospect Park West, after the last block of shops and houses and schools, hiding in plain sight like a purloined letter. I was excited when we stumbled across it. I already loved our neighborhood, but to discover after years of living there that it also had a secret door to a massive Edward Gorey-esque necropolis it was dreamlike an embarrassment of weird riches. I said to my daughter, never forget what your father and mother have given to you by moving here. Let's go into the cemetery. I only had a mustache then. It was a rainy, humid, gray spring day, and I was wearing a raincoat with my hood up and big dark sunglasses for some reason. And my daughter was wearing her red rain jacket and her yellow boots. We approached the guard at the gate and he stopped us. Are you sure you want to go to the cemetery? And I said, yes. And he said, I was not talking to you. I was talking to her. And then he looked at my daughter and said, the cemetery is very large. There are places you can go where no one could hear you if you needed help, even if there were a lot of visitors today, which there are not. So I ask again, are you sure you want to go into this cemetery alone with this man who has a mustache and is wearing dark glasses? My daughter said, I am not afraid. That man is my father. Reluctantly, the guard accepted this truth and let us pass. The guard was right. The cemetery was mostly empty, above ground at least. But below, it was full to bursting. They don't bury many bodies at Greenwood anymore. They're almost out of room. So the ground was heaving with the dead and nature feasted on it. We wandered over mounds of the greenest grass and the limbs of the dogwoods heavy with rain and fresh blooms that dipped down to meet us as we navigated around the headstones and obelisks and peered through gated windows into dark tombs. It was vivid and beautiful and quiet and not scary. In fact, I realized that we were the scariest things in the cemetery. There were some actual mourners there that day. They had the sense to drive through the cemetery rather than plod through the rain and muck. And we would run into them from time to time on the cemetery road. They would come around the bend and we would see their headlights and we would wave our hands in greeting by the side of the road and each time the cars would slow and stop. I couldn't see into their windows, but I could imagine the driver's inner debate as they paused. Should we get out? Should we get out and save that little girl from that man? Or should we flee from those obvious terrifying ghosts who are creepily waving at us luring us out of our car so they can steal our souls forever. After a while, one impulse would win out over the other and they would drive on. That happened several times. It was fantastic. Let's come back here every Sunday, I said to my daughter. We'll stand by the side of the road and we'll wave at passing cars. And as they make the turn around the road, we'll run over the hill to end run them and wave at them a second time like the phantom hitchhiker from the Twilight Zone, and they will be scared. Look at us. We have all the odd and specific details that make a good ghost story. People will say, I went to the cemetery and saw them. The pale girl in the red raincoat and the mustache man who killed her. They will tell the story to their friends. And soon enough, people will come looking for us. They may even imagine that they've seen us, even on those days we're not here. And when you're in college and I'm too sad to come here by myself, our journey through this underworld will become legend. We will continue. Like descendants of descendants 
of the birds. And that way, we will live forever. We were the ghosts, get it? <laughs>